admiration uh, society going for Asanka as well. I just love how he's able to quietly and calmly uh, work out the technical architecture for even the most, the most difficult uh, solutions and difficult customers. So Asanka asked me to talk a little bit about open source uh, and the strategies around it. So I was thinking, you know, what can I do here to, uh, to bring something more current to the table? I think open source is well embedded uh, in the environment now, of course, of the enterprise. But what, there's a lot of things that have been changing lately in the open source environment. So I thought I would uh, open up a bit of discussion with you about some of the strategic choices that you have around open source and maybe uh, provide some uh, some ammo that you can use while making your, your op selling open source inside your organization. And I do have a point of view, so uh, you know, I'm not claiming I'm right on all these things. This is some of the things that I've been seeing among our customer base and things that I've been thinking about in the industry. But uh, I'm, uh, I'd love to have you push back on any of these and uh, if you can and tell me how I can continue to, to promote open source better in the industry. So I thought I'd organize the talk around some questions that I've been hearing from customers. So this is the eight slides I have in my uh, presentation are just some discussion around these eight different topics about uh, relating to open source uh, in your organization. Some of these are old questions that are getting slightly different answers these days, and some of them are, are new. But, so I'll just go through these eight questions. So if any if these questions aren't interesting to you, now's a good time to, to leave, and I won't take any, any offense to that. Uh, I also found my eight slides had a lot of text on them, so I thought I'd better put some color into the presentation. So the first question is about digital transformation. Um, how can we take the old business and build new value around it? And Sanjeeva talked a little bit about this in, in the uh, keynote this morning, uh, you know, how does open store, source contribute to and actually be a central uh, choice that you make as you're, uh, as you're uh, working on your digital transformation uh, strategy? And I think there's really two areas that it boils down to. One is uh, about control. So digital transformation is about increasing the, your consumption and production of information. It's about becoming more of a software company no matter what industry you're in. And the control over that core asset of your business, which is increasingly software, is, is really a strategic decision that you now have to make uh, in, in your company more often. And uh, one of the things about open source that really helps that is it gives you all the advantages of ownership. You can see the code, you can fork it, you can change it, you can resell it. Um, it's open, you are free to do what you want. So choosing open source today isn't going to lock you out of decisions that you could make in the future. So it really becomes uh, about, uh, about giving you the control that you need uh, over the core assets of your company. And the other part is about agility. Open source is really built for agility. It's built to be uh, adopted quickly. You just download it and you use it. You don't have to go to your lawyers and, or sign up for a, a trial version before you try it out. It's easy to discard. It's easy to experiment with. Um, you can, one of the uh, things our customers like is that they can get well down the road with a project before they have to even consider uh, whether or not a commercial relationship makes sense. You don't have to buy software first and then have shelfware. Uh, it's built by its nature, as Sanjeeva pointed out, to be extended, adapted, uh, combined with other uh, technology. Uh, those are all very important in, in achieving the agility that you're looking for in a business organization. So uh, one of the things we're going to be, I think, doing more this year is really promoting uh, open source as a key, uh, a key strategy that you should adopt when you're looking at agility and control. Um, the cloud is really changing uh, everything. So a lot of our customers are saying, oh, I used to do open source, but now there's these cloud services. And in fact, cloud is really cool. I can just go, I can get it today. I don't even have to download and, and uh, find a server to run it on, uh, so forth. And so, you know, is open source still relevant in your organization? And my answer is yes and no. <laughs> yes, it absolutely is. If, if cloud, you can't use cloud for some 
uh, reason, if there's some regulation or some policy in your organization, those are diminishing quickly. Uh, there were, we used to see a lot of pushback on cloud services because of security, uh, data privacy, things like that. We're, those are really diminishing. We don't hear those as, nearly as much as we used to. Um, but then there are uh, still control issues. If you're adopting a cloud service, a cloud is becoming a new source of lock-in. Even though it's, a, it's quick to get in and it's a, it's a very modest operational expense to get started, uh, it can be very hard actually to pull away from a, a, uh, a system, a cloud system. And that system might be critical to your business. So thinking about whether there's some control issues that, that you need before you sign up for a cloud service. And there are times when a cloud is just, a, you get efficiencies because it's one size fits all more or less. And sometimes one size doesn't fit you. So there's good technical reasons sometimes to have deeper access into the code base, the running operational system, make the modifications and customizations that, that optimize it for your business. Um, and then another question I, I've been hearing more customers asking is, if I host in the cloud, you know, who's benefiting from the analytics? Uh, analytic data is, can be another product. It can give you a lot of insight. Are you really getting all the analytics that you, that you could use from a cloud system, or are some of those being hidden by the vendor? Uh, so those are some of the reasons people are still choosing open source. But we also recognize, of course, that if, it's, if you're really just trying to turn a system on quickly, it's hard to beat cloud. You just go to our, if you need an API uh, management solution, go to our website. You sign up for your free trial, and within seconds, you have your system up and running, and you can start to configure it and get value out of it immediately. So that's hard to beat. Um, so it's not also not so much if uh, if uh, if I need to evolve the system. In in uh, uh, if my need to evolve is limited, so I'm doing a simple project. I'm not expecting to change it very much. A cloud system might be perfect. I can start there, and I don't have to worry that you know I won't have the ability to evolve in the future because I just am not prioritizing uh, the evolution of the system. And then you know, those two are actually generally uh, attractive to people with small systems, getting started, experiments, um, smaller projects. On the larger side, there's a lot of complexity that goes into scaling. Uh, that you can avoid by using a cloud system. So we're really seeing adoption of our cloud by people getting in uh, light and early and people uh, doing very sophisticated stuff and large volume stuff, but they just don't want to have to worry about the scaling architecture because that's built into the cloud. So there really is, uh, uh, for each project, I think there's an answer uh, that you can determine from examining some of these questions. But that answer might also change over time as the conditions change. So what we're trying to do with WSO2 and with the introduction of a lot more cloud uh, products and services uh, at this conference today is promote the idea that you can get the benefits of either and you can switch between them as your conditions change. So for us, it's very important to keep the parity of the feature and the same code base running the cloud systems and the on-premise systems to provide an export button from one or the other, and an import button on the other, so that you can change uh, your deployment as your conditions change. A lot of our uh, uh, early customers on cloud would start there. They would try it out. They'd be on there. They'd develop the system. They'd understand what their needs were. They'd validate it all. They'd start to see it scale up. And then they'd be able to make a decision, do we want to stay on cloud? Does on-premise make more sense? And uh, some of them have migrated uh, onto open source for some of the reasons I've listed here. Other ones have kept on. And we've actually seen some folks even go from open source into cloud as they built their application, decided, hey, the, the, business, the cost model, the uh, not worrying about scaling is an advantage to me. I'd rather have this in cloud and moving it back into cloud. So one of the, my favorite new terms that I've heard over the last year is talent strategy. You know, as we've seen digital, Transformation isn't just about technology, it's about business culture. And uh, as you're experimenting, as you're letting a 1,000 flowers bloom in order to find those 10 hit singles, um, you also need agility, not just in your technology, but in your, uh, in your 
ability to quickly assemble the right team inside your organization using outside resources uh, in order to get that business agility and team agility that you need. So it, this, we often see uh, customers with parts of this in-house, maybe strategy, design, and architecture. They do a lot in-house. They need some help with the implementation. Or maybe they have all that down, but they really need help with operations, so they'd like us to run it with our managed cloud offering, or they need some training for their own operations staff. Um, and there's a choice on each one of those, which is appropriate to have in-house and which are appropriate to outsource for each of those projects, and even change that over time as well. So um, we think open source really helps uh, with that because it helps build a large pool of, of uh, experts. And we have a uh, deep and ever-broadening uh, talent network through our partners. Uh, we have, as you know, some consulting services, which we can, we don't, and we don't make our, our main business around doing consulting, but we can help fill in some gaps for you. If you need some architecture consulting or a quick start, need some training, need us to embed a team member uh, with you, we can help, help with that. And open source really helps transfer knowledge, keep, keep the community really open, and give you a lot of options as you're constructing the talent strategy that you have on a kind of project by project and experiment by experiment basis. So another question we get a lot is, you know, when should I allow my developers to jump in the water and, and dive into the pool? Um, how should I prioritize uh, allowing my engineers to contribute to open source? And I'm, we're actually seeing less of this uh, now than, than we used to. This question isn't coming up as much. We do have organizations that are interested in working with us and contributing back. Um, I think uh, overall, um, it's, this is still important, and in fact, even more important, as software becomes central to your organization, attracting the right engineering talent uh, for, to, for your long-term uh, digital transformation journey is in, important. And one of the kind of free perks you can offer to those talented engineers is to uh, allow them or encourage them or even mandate them to participate in open source uh, communities that helps them build their knowledge helps them build, uh, build reputation. Um, just the openness of the community uh, can really help there. We also have customers who build extensions or make improvements to our technology and quickly realize that just writing some new code doesn't solve their problem over the long term. The code needs to be maintained, it needs to be supported. Giving that code back, if it matches the roadmap of the community, if you're talking about WSO2, if it matches WSO2's roadmap, getting those improvements back, if it's something we like and adopt, get out to other customers, then the support and maintenance uh, responsibility goes away. We take it on, the community takes it on, and you have improved the product in a way that benefits you, but you've relieved yourself of that long-term responsibility for maintenance just by giving it a, a back. Um, most of our uh, cust strategic customers want to also be very uh, conscious of where we're going in our roadmap and give a lot of feedback in our roadmap. And contributing back to open source is a good way to do that at the ground level where the, where the, uh, where the rubber meets the road. So you can be working directly with the community that's helping to find the roadmap for the project and make sure it's moving in the direction that you like. And what's best, you know, all these ways to contribute are very low cost. Um, you're talking about sweat equity rather than, than, uh, than money out of your budget. So these are a very uh, cost-effective uh, way to increase your, uh, your uh, to deepen your strategy around, around open source and to continue to attract the talent that you need. What, we're, what unfortunately we're seeing is uh, there are companies that have an asset they like to, to donate back um, and they are kind of stuck in their own legal department uh, who has to learn about open source and decide whether that intellectual property can be contributed back. Um, this is hard uh, in a lot of organizations. It's like, hey, I have this cool thing. I wrote it, and I'd like to give it away free, and a lot of legal departments don't understand that. It takes a lot of education, a lot of strategic guidance, so um, I'd encourage any of you who have influence on that to, to help smooth that path and help enable the contribution back to the community as open source. So we love con contributors. We'd like to see more. 
you know, please let me know if you have something or some people who'd like to, to participate with us. Uh, I think we need to do a better job as well as at encouraging and supporting and building that uh, external uh, community. So you have a lot of choices. Uh, one of them is um, choosing between unsupported or self-supported op open source. So uh, basically, uh, in terms of WC2, it means using it without a subscription. And there are you know, great uh, reasons to, to do this. And we recognize these and, support and encourage them all. Um, if you have no money, you know, please don't, uh, don't not use our software uh, just because you can't afford a subscription. It's enterprise grade. It's meant to be used and shared. And if you have no money, we'd rather you used us than, than uh, didn't use us or used a competitor or something. So please, please do it. Um, if you really are willing to, uh, to match the level of expertise that you develop with the risks that you incur, then that, that you might incur by using the software, that's great. If you have a low risk project and uh, you feel you have the ability to maintain it, if there's a problem with it and the consequences of, a, of an outage or a bug or something are not severe, that, that's, that's totally, totally fine. Um, there are times when uh, you see this more with like Google, where you know, they use Linux a lot, but they have built, it's so critical to them since they're running, I don't know, millions, billions, I don't know how many Linux instances they, they run. It's so critical that they have, have built the, their own infrastructure around supporting that and evolving that. So there are times we recognize it's, when it's so critical, you, you really don't want to, to outsource any control to any vendor that might introduce risk. And then there's just the cost, uh, cost uh, uh, equation. You know, what's the what's the cost and what's the benefit? Uh, what's the risks that I am looking to avoid, um, and is it worth it? So these are some of the uh, some of the questions people ask. It's perfectly okay to use WSO2 products. That's why we put them out under the Apache license. But um, I think most of the customers that we've worked with that have explored this in more depth have found that supporting the software and providing updates and resolving issues and managing a 24-7 support operation, it's hard, sweaty, unglamorous work. Um, you know, it's kind of the bread and butter of what we do. <laughs> we talk a lot about how we innovate and all that, but a lot of what we do in WSO2 is not glamorous. It's not that much fun. You're working around the clock sometimes on a critical issue for a customer. Um, it's hard work. Um, and you know there are we're willing to do it. We can spread the cost out among many customers of providing that fix and running those systems. Um, so I think for of course our customers have all decided to do that. I think there are some of our users who also uh, would do better to look into this, assess the real risks they're taking, and see whether they can outsource that that horrible grud, uh, drudge work of supporting and updating the code to us. Open source for free. It's, it's kind of a, a bit of a wild west, west rodeo. Um, everybody can be going in, in, uh, in uh, different directions. And again, I, I, we don't have a problem with, uh, with anybody using our code for free. It doesn't cost us anything to have you download the software. What it costs us is to, for us, is to support you, support customers, interact with customers, uh, all the work that we do with our customers around that relationship, uh, that's where we, ha that's the relationship we have to monetize. We need to collect money in order to sustain a business based on, on that relationship. So we're perfectly happy to have people uh, use our stuff, but we can't support you for free. <laughs> if you want to use it for free, yeah, uh, you're on your own. And, um, uh, you know, if you have the, uh, uh, every, uh, everybody either has, time or money, I think we found. If you have time, you want more money. If you have money, you want more time. And we, we help our customers trade off uh, between these two. If you have lots of time, you can investigate the software, you can take the time you need to, to resolve any issue without risk to your business, that's fine. Um, you can use our stuff uh, free, put in the, the labor it takes. If you have money but you don't have time, downtime causes a significant risk, uh, to you, then you know, just 
can outsource that responsibility to us uh, through a subscription. So you know, these are all the things that we, that we uh, have already developed our expertise in uh, use, use, using the software. So that's like development support. How can we uh, make you more productive? Uh, how do we keep you going 24-7 with support services? Pr uh, preventative maintenance through providing updates and patches. Um, how uh, adding on uh, new features. Uh, we don't do a lot of that outside uh, what's in the open source. There are other, other companies who will charge you for some add-on uh, features. Uh, operations like our managed cloud services. You can, you can do all of this yourself, but what's the cost to develop that versus to go with a vendor like, like WSO2? And then you also have to calculate in the risk. Um, a lot of our customers, the risk itself is the driving economic rationale. If you have, for instance, a security vulnerability, that could, uh, that could impact your business severely. Um, is it worth it to have a subscription to get uh, pat updates to any security vulnerabilities, get advanced notice of security vulnerabilities in order to prevent that kind of attack? Um, if you're running a, a, a critical system, the risk could be uh, high and building that in. And then, of course, there's uh, strategic costs. Uh, if there's problems ceding any control to us as a vendor, um, if, if you uh, don't really need to, uh, if you're not looking for the benefit of crowdsourcing the evolution of the product, uh, getting a lot of eyeballs on the security, then you don't really uh, necessarily need a, a subscription. So. Uh, we do encounter this quite a bit, especially under, uh, there's a lot of folks who are attracted to WSO2 in particular because it's open source, and they equate that with free, and it absolutely is free uh, to use the products, but to wrap it up in a full commercial package of support uh, for this is, is, uh, is tough, and it's often a good investment uh, to make to get a subscription. So I also, uh, so we, our position is we encourage you to use it free um, if you have uh, lots of time and you're willing to build the expertise and do that. If you'd rather outsource that to us, we try and make that cost effective uh, for you. But if you do use it for free, there's still great ways to, to participate in the community and, and give back a little bit um, and to help others who are in your same position. So, uh, you know, tell, tell a friend about us. Recommend us to, to one of your friends or colleagues in, in your industry or publish a blog about what you're doing with WSO2 or some features that you liked or pub, uh, publish about something you don't like about it and we can find out about that and, and uh, go back to the community and try and get that addressed or file a bug um, if, if you find one so that we can eliminate that. So we'd love to have our free users uh, cont contribute back to the community but we also as a business, uh, we need to focus on our commercial customers. Uh, we're doing a little better now. We, we have some ability to support, uh, support our customers that, uh, that have some small support requirements but really aren't qualified as a commercial customer. Uh, so we're trying to explore how we can do a little bit more to encourage WSO2 use uh, without impacting our, our uh, bottom line. And then uh, there's a lot of, uh, I think the open source uh, term is being changed in the industry. There's uh, a, a lot more FUD about open source. I think we're uh, seeing this a lot muddier and we haven't maybe done our part in really defending the full enterprise version Apache license model that we promote, which really gives you, uh, you the ability to use the open source for free. Um, there are a lot of open source vendors now that, that kind of benefit from the open source mantle by providing a community version, which is maybe a starter version or a, a, um, a non-enterprise version. Maybe it, often usually it's intentionally limited to, have, to omit features that are necessary for real serious enterprise use. And some of those uh, vendors don't even uh, offer a uh, a way to support a community version. If you want to uh, use the community version, you can't get support. If you want support, you have to upgrade to a commercial license. And then you're out of open source. You know, you're, you don't have control over the code. You're not sure uh, 
you, you don't uh, have the ability to influence the direction, you're back into a lock-in model. So um, I'd encourage you to, to help me uh, in adopt a more meaningful uh, definition of a, uh, an open source vendor. So uh, one is make sure it's not so limited, especially in the enterprise space, that you can't use it for, for a broad array of real enterprise scenarios under a free open source license. Um, make sure that uh, you know, uh, the company should offer, if there is an open source version, that they will support that as well and not uh, upgrade you out of the, upgrade in quotes, out of the uh, open source model into a proprietary license model. And I think the temptation when you have this split between open source and the enterprise uh, version is all the really cool new stuff. Which side of the line is it going to come in? Oh, it's going to come in in the, in the pay side. So um, we've seen this over and over with some of the customers where new cool stuff, it's just, it's not, the line is shrinking. Uh, the new features are growing in the enterprise version. What's in the community version kind of tapers off. And that's really unfortunate. So um, we think it's important to uh, look at the trend of, of where the innovations are coming into the, into the software. So uh, you know, these are things that we stand by, I think, to make sure that you have real enterprise utility, that you, we support exactly what's available in open source, and we don't have any features that are not uh, also available, uh, th that are private and reserved on, on uh, the side that are, are critical for you to use. So sometimes you really need a good, a good uh, a team behind you to accomplish your goal, which can be a tricky goal. Uh, how should you look to, uh, to select a commercial relationship? So I'm just, this is totally a blatant pitch for <laughs> how we do business. We think it's the right model. Uh, you can compare and contrast with other proprietary and open source vendors that you have. So I think, as I mentioned, we're con uh, committed to those principles I outlined on the last uh, last page. Uh, I think we have done a really good job of keeping our, our costs low. We run a very efficient and cost-effective ship in order to keep the, the cost low. Our uh, sales and marketing uh, particular are probably lower than any of our uh, kind of peers in the industry. Uh, we rely on our open source products to attract you, <laughs> and you can download them, you can try them out, and then you know come to us when uh, you have questions or are interested in commercial support. So we've done a, a, a lot of work to keep the time, money, value proposition uh, balanced very, very well. Um, again, we have a license structure that I encourage you, you to adopt. Uh, we have, as many of you know, introduced over last year WSO2 Update and the WSO2 Update Manager, which uh, opens up the stream of what used to be called patches that only customers got to the general public. The, those updates are still licensed. That's the one thing we, we uh, keep. Uh, but they are licensed freely for development use. So anybody can download our Apache software. They can install all the updates and, and get started on their project. Uh, what you can't do with those updates is put them into your production systems without a subscription. Uh, so we are, uh, uh, there's two things about that license that still make it so that it's not, uh, doesn't penalize you for, uh, for not having a subscription or terminating a subscription. Uh, all those updates get rolled out periodically into new open source release. So if there's some update that you are trying, you really rely on it, it turns out it fixes a critical bug, um, you can get an open source version of that, there's just a delay. So if you have time, <laughs> you can wait for uh, a new uh, release of that product, which will have all those updates built in, and you should be good to go, and you can use it completely for free. So again, there's everything that we do under updates will be available under open source. It's just a, really a time lag. The commercial service and the license gives us the ability to deliver those you know, periodically and kind of real time, continuously, uh, to our, our customers as an additional benefit. And the other thing about that license is if you're using them in production and you have a subscription with us, so all the updates are, are used, but you decide you want to terminate the subscription, there is nothing that you remove from your data center that day. Those, those updates are still licensed for you to use perpetually. As long as you received them, they were issued within the period of your subscription. So you don't ever have to rip anything out. If you want to terminate your subscription and then scale up to 100 more instances, 
you're not allowed to do that because you, you're not licensed to have those updates in that new subscription. So there is still a value to have your subscription. We don't want to lose you as a customer, but if you just want to lock down a system, it's been running perfectly, you don't want to destabilize it, you just want to terminate your subscription, that's fine. That's, that's within the parameters of the update license. So we're trying to make, you know, eliminate something that could be very disruptive to your organization where you need to terminate the license for, or terminate the subscription for some reason, but you don't want to terminate that license. Again, the license structure with uh, open source preserves your ability to innovate with the Apache license. Um, and then there's, you know, trust. Uh, a lot of our customers come to us not just for, uh, for the products, for the technology that we deliver, but for the relationship that we give, trusting Asanka and the folks on his team to work with you on an architecture, maybe give you some new insights, learn together what's gonna work in the future. Um, and, uh, and provide the, the services both at all phases of your, uh, of your project, including when you're in steady state production uh, with 24-7 support and, and things like that that can help you, tr you can trust us to, to help, uh, help you get past any issues that you find. So that's it.